A Moment in Naval History. Just six years after Captain Washington Chambers arranged for pilot Eugene Ely to fly a plane from a makeshift platform built on a Navy cruiser, America entered World War I, and this brand new thing, U.S. Naval Aviation, was put to the test. It was June 5, 1917, when U.S. Navy Lieutenant Kenneth Whiting led an aviation squadron to France, among the first of America's military forces to arrive on the continent to aid Britain, France, and Russia against Germany and Italy. Other Navy flyers soon followed and took a major role in the Allies' critical campaigns against German U-boats, which were taking a toll on Allied shipping. For the first time, these submarines had to be concerned about being spotted from the air. The British designed de Havilland DH-4 Liberty plane was flown by both Navy and Marine Corps aviators in France and was capable of dropping bombs on the enemy. To produce enough aircraft for service in the war, the government established the Naval Aircraft Factory at Philadelphia, where many women joined men on the production line. Naval aviation's principal role in the war was to provide eyes in the sky. Seaplanes, primarily various models of the Curtis flying boat, patrol the coasts of France and England, alerting Allied forces to the presence of the enemy. Months after World War I ended, the Navy flew a new plane, the Curtis NC-4, from New York to Portugal, the first airplane to fly across the Atlantic, underscoring the importance of this new weapon of war and hinting of things to come.